Good morning. <laughs> Good afternoon. It's the 24th of September, 2011. How you, 2012. I don't like keep calling it 2011. How you doing, everybody? This is Dave TV. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fall day out there today. Just gorgeous. Um, upper 60s, sunny, cool. I love it. <laughs> okay, so here's the Washington Post. One of my big criticisms of the Washington Post over and over and over again. It's just, it's looking stale. It needs a, it really does need a design makeover of some sort. You know, I don't know. It's, 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 there's a lot of big pictures in it. I know, the pictures are good. I mean, they have good photographers, but it just keeps telling you that there's just, we don't have enough copy to fill the paper. When you constantly see that it's just constant use of big pictures all over on every section, it's basically telling you, we don't, we don't, we don't, they really need this big of a picture of John Stewart. I mean, it's basically telling you we don't have enough copy to fill the paper. You know, it's just, we're trying to, you know, it's, we're just desperately trying to fill this rag and it looks bad, and you know. So what? What are they doing? It well, you notice, you know, I didn't. I don't always get to see the examine and the express. Rather, this is the Washington Post freebie tab that you find at the uh, metro stations and stuff like that. They've now started delivering these to Starbucks, at least out here in Wild West Fairfax. So I'm getting to see the express every day. Now I used to see this once in a blue moon, but I'm seeing it every day now. And you know what? I really like it. I think it's really well done. Um, it's a quick read. It's colorful. It's it's right to the point. Honestly, if the Washington Post can turn itself more and more into this, you know, maybe dr drop the broad, the old-fashioned, big, fat, broad-shaped page of the Eye of Roosevelt era and go to a tabloid with a lot of color in it and just get me to the nuts and the bolts. I think, I really think the Express is what the future of the, po the print post should be. More, you know, this should be called the Washington Post. <laughs> I, I don't care if they even charge you. Keep the price low. If it's not given away for free, make it 25 cents or 50 cents. But make it fatter than this, obviously, and really fill it up. But, you know, I, I just, the more and more I look at this paper, this is what I see the future of the Washington Post being. Yeah, I really think a tabloid, lots of color, quick read, um, you know, to the point type stuff. Uh, this, is what the, this is what the future is. This, this is the future. And this is the past. Okay, <laughs> quick. This is quickly becoming the past. And, or you know, they got to redesign this paper, man. It's just, you know, I mean, the stories are, you know, way too long. And I mean, who reads all these stories? You know, they just go on and on. And it's like the business section yesterday, endlessly long stories about pipelines and oil production. And I don't want to read that. Yeah. You know? Most people are not even going to read that stuff. Mmm. Clear Coke. <laughs> so I had a DCRTV pointed, DCRTV are pointed out this morning about um, what's wrong with this picture. So let's look at this picture. This is, um, whoa, psychology is iconic there. This is the uh, WNEW website, okay? This is um, CBSDC.com or whatever you want to call it. What are they calling it? Washington cbslocal.com. Essentially, this is, let me, let me get these, I, I hate doing these Windows things here. There we go. Can we see it there? This is CBSDC. This is their website, okay? And as you see, this is a radio station that's trying to be thought of as the main all newser in the market. So basically, this is it. This is what you see at the top of the page. Virtually, okay, these six major news stories in the little window here, and then, you know, this stuff, and there's very little on this site. And here's, what's gets, here's what gets you. This is Monday. This is Monday afternoon. When you go to political news on Monday afternoon, you see a story from Thursday about a debate between Tim Kaine and George Allen. Now, this is still one of their lead stories on Monday, four, almost five days later. You know? I mean, come on, man. You can do better than that. People are wondering, why is WNEW doing so poorly in the ratings? It's kind of because CBS is kind of, it's not putting its, it's, it has a crappy website. You know, one of the things that Jim Farley and WTOP have really done well and seen, you know, is the fact that radio is just one aspect of it. 
you know, multimedia, websites, mobile phones, a whole bunch of different things, Twitter, Facebook. It's all just avenues of dissemination. And, you know, um, that's the one thing, you know, okay, you might say, okay, we, we, they do put out a radio signal, WNEW, and it is all news all the time, and it's okay signal, and it's credible, whatever. The website still stinks. And when you still have almost five-day-old political news leading the website, it's telling me the people at CBS are not serious, are not serious about what they're doing. Which gets back to my theory that they're not out to dethrone WTOP because they want to buy it. <laughs> they don't want to, you know, they don't want to throw rocks. You know, if you want to buy a house, see this beautiful house sitting there, you want to buy it. You're not going to throw rocks at the house and break the windows to get the price down. I mean, you're going to try to get the price down, but you're not going to throw rocks at it <laughs> to do it. You know, I mean, you're going to try other ways to negotiate. And I think really think that's what CBS is doing. They really want to buy Hubbard's WTOP. They're using this WNEW as this kind of placeholder thingy dingy. And they're trying to get the price down for WTOP. But at the same time, they're not going to make enough of a challenge. They're not going to make enough of a serious threat to WTOP as to harm the asset that's eventually going to be theirs. At least that's what they think so in their mind. So that's what I think. <laughs> Uh, did you watch the Redskins yesterday? Yeah, like, okay. I get, I, I'm one of those people that's kind of like happy when they win, happy when they lose. I love the Redskins. I've been a Redskins fan since I moved here 40 years ago. Um, but at the same time, I don't much care for Dan Snyder as the owner of the team. So even when they're awful, I get a certain sense of pleasure. So in a weird way, if they win, I'm happy. If they lose, I'm still happy. So it's a win-win situation there. We're watching them on CBS. Now, I should have... DVR'd it, but uh, I didn't. I was watching them on Channel 9 last yesterday's game was on CBS, and you noticed when they did a lot of real fast you know, action sequences, you could see pixelation in the picture, meaning the digital picture kind of breaks up in the background, gets all mushy looking. And that's because Channel 9 here in Washington is not owned by CBS, it's owned by Gannett. And what they do is they run two sub-channels. They run a weather channel and they run that Bounce TV, which makes the bandwidth for the main signal a little bit low what it should be, meaning that when you get on that HD signal bandwidth, lots of pictures of action, movement, that kind of thing, like this, uh, um, you get picture break. And I noticed that in a lot of a lot of the sequences yesterday. It was very annoying looking. Um, you don't get that as bad much on Channel 5 here in Washington when the games are on Fox 5 because Fox doesn't have any sub channels, so there's more of a dig there's a better HD signal on Channel Five since it's owned by Fox. And you notice that CBS's own stations, like Channel Thirteen in Baltimore, and Fox's own stations, like Channel Five here in Washington, don't put sub channels on because of that football stuff. Because they're the main, you know, channel. You know, Fox has the NFL, the NFC, and um, and a a CBS says the AFC. So there, but you notice it when you do see those games on Channel Nine here in Washington, Gannett owned Channel 9, you do see uh, digital ramifications, shall we say. Uh, okay, the Emmys, I got my notes here, I have some notes today. Uh, the Emmys, I didn't watch them, I don't really give a rat's ass. You know what I watch on Sunday nights? Wallander, Masterpiece Theater. I, I really love Kenneth Branagh as this depressed Swedish detective. It is a magnificent show. If you haven't caught Wallander, catch it. So I think they're only running three or four episodes. It's one of those things that comes back again and time and again. If you haven't caught Wallander on PBS on Masterpiece Theater, uh, it is magnificent and it blows away anything else on television. So I didn't watch the Emmys and who cares? Uh, I really think Breaking Bad is the best show on television right now. And what did it not win anything? I, one, one. I think some... Aaron, what's his face? The guy who plays the bald young guy. He's good. He's really good. He won it. I think he won an Emmy, but everybody else didn't. And I think this was the best season of Breaking Bad. And I also like Mad Men a lot, although I don't think the past season was the best season. It still was a good show. It's still miles and miles away. I tried watching Homeland on Showtime when I got a free preview a while back. I don't know. It just didn't. I didn't catch it. I don't know. Maybe it's one of those shows that takes a while to catch on to. I don't know. It didn't click for me.
Is this Brian Wilson's last week on WMAL? We're kind of thinking it is. You know, it's the last week of September. I think at the end of September, he's going to say adios. You know, he meant, he made an announcement a week or two ago that he was leaving WMAL, okay? And he made some disparaging comments about the station, how it doesn't have much of a local lineup there in the, in the Baltimore Sun. And then he was gone from the station for a while. His wife had a baby. He had a cold, whatever. He came back Friday. He was back again today. I guess he's going to be back the rest of this week. He sounds chipper, more chipper than usual. And I think the reason is... He's eyeing his exit. He's like, he's out of this disaster area. What should WMAL do to replace him? WMAL, if it was smart, and it isn't, it's a really dumb, stupid, effing station. If they were smart at WMAL, they would replace Brian Neiman with an arch-out liberal. Somebody like Bill Press, okay? I'm not saying Bill Press, but somebody like that. They need to have a left-right balance in that morning show, okay? doesn't mean the show can't lean to the right, they could have righty guests on whatever, and Brian Wilson is definitely a dyed-in-the-wool GOP-loving Republican. No question about it. Pair Brian with somebody on the left and have that show be a nice, dynamic mix, okay? I think Brian, Brian Neiman is a lefty, but he plays a conservative on the show. Just, I guess, that's the way they tell him to do it. So I really think WMAL needs to hire a liberal, maybe a woman, I don't know, maybe another man, but they need to have a clash on the show of opinions. That would make the show more interesting. The problem that WMAL has right now in its ratings is it's only appealing to the right-wing audience in the Washington area, and there's a lot more lefties. If WMAL is going to be a successful station in the ratings, and so far it isn't, ever since they got the, the FM signal, they're still 17th, 18th place. They need to have more diversity, more mixing up on the station. They need to have a lefty paired with Brian Wilson. Okay, Bill Hess, he's the, he's the manager of the station. You need a lefty to pair with Brian Wilson if you want ratings. If you're going to bring in another righty and just, you know, have the two guys agree on everything, that the dynamic of the show is going down the toilet even more than it is. Okay, or the other thing is get rid of Wilson altogether with Neiman gone and start over. That may just be the way to go. New lefty, new righty, whole new show. You know, that, I, I would say that would work too. <laughs> and you need an afternoon drive show. The same thing. Lefty, righty, mips. Okay, local, live, late breaking. <laughs> Where have I heard that before? <laughs> All right, folks, that's Dave TV. 15th anniversary this month. Send us a donation. Make it $5,000. You know, I, I want five $5,000 donations. Then I look out there and I see there's a lot of folks out there who have done really well in the media business. You know, big, long-time anchors on some of the news stations and DJs that have been around for 20, 30 years. I know they've got some money. You know, the, we do good here at DCR-TV. We keep the memories alive. We're preserving Washington and Baltimore radio and television. Nobody else is doing that. Isn't it worth some money, you know? 5000 bucks. If I can get $5,000 donation from five folks, that would really set this site up to be in good financial shape for 2013 for our 16th year. So folks, I tell you, and, and even if you can't make $5,000, even if it's only $5, every donation counts. So send us some bucks, independent, one man, me, dcrtv.com. Hit our click, just hit, hit me in the face. Click on the support link there at the top of DCRTV. Thank you for watching Dave TV, 24th, September, 2012. Live long, prosper.